Hello, welcome. This is Blockchain Bloom, the Blockchain Educator. I'm at the Pink and in today's video, I'm going to talk about that. What happened yesterday? What a crash again. And yeah, what was the reason for it? Uh, that's very important. The second thing I would like to mention that yesterday was, you know, a Bitcoin day in El Salvador, because since yesterday, uh, Bitcoin is a legal tender in El Salvador, so big news. And the third thing is that SEC, uh, the SEC, threatens to sue Coinbase over crypto yield program it considers uh, security, and this is the reason for it. Guys, all this in today's video. And if you haven't subscribed to this YouTube channel, but you would like to get the daily fresh cryptocurrency and blockchain news, then what are you waiting for? Subscribe, bell button, all that's the only thing you have to do. And then you're getting these videos on a daily basis and I keep you up to date. Also check out the links under this video because there are very useful ones which you can use, save money with, and also a free course, how to start to invest in Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. And yeah, smash the like button if you like this kind of content. And now it's time to check out the market, how that looks like. And um, let's zoom in a little bit because we can see that, you know, Bitcoin went down 13.7% in the last 24 hours, Ethereum 15.7%, Cardano 15.7%. So yes, after many, many weeks just going up or a little bit sideways, we have here uh, a kind of correction. <coughs> When we're looking at uh, the winners, we still have near protocol going up 30%, Algorand 9%. Yeah, that was it pretty much, not a long list. And when we're looking at the le yeah, losers, 29%, Theta, Filecoin 26, Cosmos 25, and so on and so forth. So yes, definitely a bad, uh, bad day, put it this way, but like um, a red day, a red day today, because what is bad if it is good, you know, uh, it depends. And let's talk about what happened really, what caused it, and all these things. So let's do it. So first of all, let's check out how the chart looks like. There are a lot of things here, and I would like to talk about it, you know, one by one. So for instance, here we have this drop which we have uh, experienced recently, which was yesterday, very, very big candle. This is 19%. It's the biggest daily drop since uh, last uh, March when we had this uh, pandemic uh, problem and, you know, the, the crash on the stock market. And, uh, well, now we are, as you can see, um, right here at 45,000. So actually it's still, you know, uh, it's going, uh, going a little bit down, but yeah, we came, uh, above this level and actually I drew this Fibonacci uh, retracement tool, which actually helps in many cases. And you can see here that here was one of the Fib levels, and then here's the second one. We broke that one, but then really quickly uh, came back. If you remember, I have drawn this line around 42,000 because for several reasons, it was a couple of times a place when the price returned. So it was like support or somehow uh, it was rejected in the past. And uh, yes, this was the level which actually was holding it. Not exactly, not exactly above 42, but 42,800, 700, something like this. What you could see on a couple of exchanges yesterday where Bitcoin actually uh, went down all the way. We still see this EMEA ribbon. We still in it until we are in it. I think uh, it's uh, the things uh, looking good on here on the daily chart. And uh, yeah, well, right now, we definitely under this 200 day moving average a little bit. We were already after the drop uh, back, but now we are going a little bit down. And yes, the next couple of days, uh, actually going to tell what's happening here. We have to wait now because now Bitcoin can easily move a little bit sideways, can bit move down, and also the market can continue. 
how bearish this is, well, time will tell. So definitely, it's hard to say anything. It's uh, likely, you know, it's always after this kind of uh, massive price drop, this is the time to accumulate and then prepare for the next run. Not financial advice, because you never know, on the other hand, what kind of period is coming after this. But this was, I think, a uh, candle with this wick that probably nobody was expecting. We talked about it that, uh, yeah, it's kind of roll over a little bit, just like here it was. But, um, um, yeah, I wasn't expecting that much, to be honest with you. Uh, a correction in the day like this, twenty uh, percent. Uh, this is this is uh, pretty significant, and um, well, what's happened basically, and what caused it, it was simply uh, over leveraged traders. Once again, this is happening many many times. <coughs> so, when everything looks very cool and price is going up. People are willing to risk more and more, and they over leverage a lot of things. And that's the reason why basically uh, the price dropped down uh, that much. You, you know, look, amount of liquidations in the past 24 hours exchanged is totally 3.54 million, uh, what's that, billion US dollar. And, um, you know, in the past uh, 24 hours, 330,243 trades were liquidated. The largest single liquidation order happened on uh, Huobi Global. The value was 43.7 million. This was one order. Here you can see the list. Uh, which one is the, the, the top one here? Uh, the mode, the buy, uh, buy bit. Here you can see the percentages, here the amounts. Uh, yeah, just 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 have a look. It is crazy what happened, and uh, yeah, also here when you look at the uh, Bitcoin liquidation, you know here you can see the longs in this darker color and the reddish in the shorts, and how much it were they were liquidated. And look, this is this massive candle. Look, and since since June, you can see this chart. Also, Glassnode posted on Twitter that you know here the local highs and over 4 billion in bitcoin open interest has been cleared during this sell off so this is the most significant leverage flush out since the sell off in mid may you know the 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 big one block we had uh, recently and this is the reason why i'm always telling you guys that please be careful with this whole kind of tradings Leverage, yes, it sounds great because when everything works out, you make a tremendous amount of money, but it is very, very risky. This is crypto, and crypto significant changes are common. Volatility is big, and uh, yeah, a lot of people uh, losing on these kind of trades. Okay, let's move on to the next news, and the next one is... Uh, all about uh, El Salvador because yesterday was El Salvador's you know kind of Bitcoin day since yesterday Bitcoin it's a legal tender uh, there so let's talk about it Okay, I'm back. I just have a kind of flu or something, and then I just had to uh, clean my nose. Right. So, yes, El Salvador. This is actually a big, big thing what happened yesterday, because the very first country in history having Bitcoin as a legal tender. And uh, some people are saying that this is the reason what caused this kind of uh, crash, because this kind of news was were priced in. It's a big, big thing. And now that it's happening, then the Bitcoin price, uh, therefore, uh, started to drop, then panic, and then this over-leveraged thing just crashed the whole, whole, whole uh, price. And actually, not just Bitcoin, 
but all other uh, cryptos. And uh, but one important thing is that when you check Bitcoin dominance, Bitcoin dominance didn't go uh, basically up, which means people still think that uh, we are looking good and keeping their um, cryptos in many, many olds, because when people are panicking, they usually the Bitcoin um, uh, dominance is going up, but this is this is not happening right now. And yes, in El Salvador, uh, you know, even in El Salvador, check this news here, McDonald's now accept Bitcoin, but only in El Salvador. So now you can actually buy your meal in McDonald's uh, with Bitcoin. And this is a totally new uh, new thing what's happening right now. And El Salvador is the first from the probably not the last country which uh, accepts uh, Bitcoin as legal tender. And this definitely helps a lot for cryptocurrency getting mainstream. So exciting things, but this could be also one of them that the news is, you know, it's again... Um, we, it was previously uh, priced in, and now when it actually happened, then the price dropped and everything just followed. And the third thing I want to talk about is all about that um, SEC threatens to sue Coinbase or a crypto yield program as they saying it is uh, security. <laughs> Well, we have this couple of SEC lawsuits against the crypto. You know, we do know about XRP. This is on for a while. And look, now uh, the new possibility that SEC threatens to sue Coinbase. And the reason is this crypto yield program they're saying is a security. So Armstrong explained uh, from Coinbase uh, that the crypto exchange approached the SEC earlier this year to brief uh, the enforcement body over the up and the coming Coinbase land program that intends to offer 4% annual yield returns on deposit of the USDC stablecoin. According to the Coinbase CEO, the SEC responded by telling the firm that the lending program is a security without any explanation and threatened to sue if the service was launched. So here's a quote from, from Armstrong. They refuse to tell us why they think it is security. And instead of uh, subpoena a, a bunch of uh, records uh, from us, we comply, demand testimony from our employees, we comply, uh, and then tell us they will be suing us if we produce proceed the lunch with zero explanation as to why. Armstrong pointed out that there are other crypto firms on the market who currently provide similar lending services to their customers and called for the SEC to provide regulatory clarity on the topic. The SEC's allocations, if Armstrong has uh, reported them accur accurately, appear to be bad news for competitors BlockFi and Celsius, which already offer crypto yield products. BlockFi is facing investigation in a number of states over its high interest uh, products. And yes, until we don't clear these things, the regulations are not clear, these kind of things will happen. But sooner or later, things will be regulated, everything will know what's going uh, on and what will happen if this and this happening, what are the consequences, and yeah. And then everything will be much, much better and easier. We are now in the stage between making crypto really, really um, widely accepted, put it this way. And for that, we do need these regulations. But now, in many um, cases, we are in this kind of nego negotiation period. And uh, they try to make up their mind. So it takes time. But uh, yeah, we're going to see a couple of things like this probably in the future. We have seen them, but it takes time. After more and more things will be more and more clear, the chances of these will definitely uh, decrease. Guys, that's it for today. If you like this kind of content, smash the like button and also subscribe to the YouTube channel Blockchain Bloom if you would like to get this daily fresh cryptocurrency and blockchain news. Tomorrow I'm coming back with the freshest. Have a good one. Bye-bye.